You are listening to Funky Monkey MMA. Listening to Funky Monkey MMA. Hey, Charles, what's going on, man? How you doing? Another day in paradise, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. you've got LFA coming up Friday night, man. Uh, how's camp been? Uh, what uh, has your preparations been like? I know you've got it kind of on short notice. Uh, no, I've actually had plenty of time. I've been, I've been doing about this fight for a while now. Um, they just told me, they asked me did I want to be on the show when it was announced that it was going to be show there, and they said they were going to have me on there. So, you know, just staying prepared is uh, the name of the game anyway. So I was just in the gym working on things anyway. Uh, I found out my opponent probably about a month or five weeks ago. So, um, I, I mean, he's a jiu-jitsu guy from Arkansas, and that's about as much as I know. I've seen a couple fights, but it wasn't too much in those fights because he ended them early. So, um, well, you, you talk about jujitsu. You you was there at the uh, American Grappling Federation uh, tournament. How did that go for you? And uh, I know you had some 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 weight issues as, as far as people being, uh, you know, the, the opponents that you had were what twenty thirty pounds heavier than you. Oh no, yeah, like uh, at AGF, I competed in the open division for no gi for um, pro basically, and I went against another guy. He's a uh, Blue belt, I don't know where he's at, but he was 188, and I weighed in at uh, 136 that morning. So um, that was fun. I lost to him by two points in a match that should have went into overtime, but the ref took the two points after his coach argued. He gave me the two and then took him away, which didn't make sense to me. But it is what it is. It was a very fun match. Um, got to test my skills. And then, um, you know, I competed at 160, uh, no gi as well. And uh against uh one of the one of the Mula Vitanovich brothers. He's pretty uh pretty good on the ground, so that was a good experience. So, you know, just just keeping I train at Saint Charles MMA, so you know, my training partners are some of the toughest competition I'll see anywhere. So, you know, I get a constant good look all the time with my jiu jitsu on the ground. Well you, you you said it, you know, you train there at Saint Charles. Um what has Mike Rogers instilled in you for this fight camp, if anything? I know you're well-rounded, but is there one thing, without giving too much away, that uh, you've worked on a little harder than other areas? Uh, I mean, really, this fight is just all about volume and staying active. You know, um, don't just having my movement have a purpose. You know, it's. It's nothing too much anyone can prepare for. You know, you can see someone's fight as much as you want. You know, I mean, when you're fighting a linear fighter, but with me, I'm I'm so well rounded. It's you just got to come in there ready to ready to fight. You know, you got to be well rounded everywhere. So for this fight, for me mostly, it's just been working on volume, trying to up kick. I'm a slow starter because um, I just take my time in there. But uh, this fight, I, I can't be a slow starter because he's got four first round finishes. Uh, due to submission, so he he comes out, he knows what he wants to do. So I just gotta do what I do and uh, push the pace from the bell. I don't I don't believe he'll have the uh, cardio to stay with me. So I just I just been doing a better job. Everyone I train with is like 150, 160 above. So it's kind of you know I, I got big bodies that I'm I'm working with, training with day in and day out. So I should be very prepared for this fight. All right, so then what can the Charles Johnson fans expect? What can the LFA fans expect come uh, Friday night on Access TV? Um, I mean, all my fans pretty know, much know how I fight. They know that I'm coming to fight, and they know that it's going to be exciting to watch, and they're going to see something different. Um, the LFA fans, it's the first time they'll get to see me, so I'm excited. Um, I'm looking for a finish. You know, in this sport, you know, 
it's so many good guys out there, but the guys who stand out are the ones who get finished, get finishes, you know, and um, you can't go in there and just try to make a career decision. So this fight, I'm really going to focus on trying to push, on pushing the pace and um, getting the finish. Uh, if I, when I finish this guy, it, it's just going to, it's going to be a big statement and, Definitely put me on the radar for bigger, bigger things. So that's that's the goal. Going here, stick to my game plan, do what I do, and um, have fun. You know, have fun and make some fans. Charles, you know, there, there's a good contingent of uh, St. Louis fighters that are on that card. How much does it mean to you to be a part of that faction uh, of St. Louis fighters that's representing the 314 to go out there? Uh, Friday night and and represent the three one four. Well, you know what? It's only really probably about two of us, honestly, um, that are really from same like the St. Louis area. But it it is great to have so much local talent within my like Grand Kansas City area, and uh, so that that's really cool to see the guys that I've been on cards in Kansas City and out of out of St. Louis and all over the place, and uh, it's really cool to see. Um, the local talent being on such a big promotion, um, you know, being it, it's in Branson. Uh, I've never fought in Branson before, so I really don't know what to expect, but I've been at a couple uh, LFA promotion and events, so um, with Ken Porter in his, in his corner and everything. So I, I kind of know what to expect, but I haven't just haven't been a part of it yet. So um, that's going to be fun on that end. That's why I said I'm, I'm just happy for the opportunity. Um, and uh, I'm just pushing forward, man. I just, you know, these these guys around here, St. Louis has a lot, a lot of great fighters. And, yeah. Uh, we got a good stable um, in the Midwest, you know, and so many guys, you know, can make it out of here. You know, we just got to stick. I think when guys start noticing that they can, like, cross train with these guys and just come up and train sometimes instead of trying to take everyone as competition right. you know, locally yes. locally you shouldn't be trying to you should run through the local competition your competition in your mind should be uh regionally and nationally yes locally you should have no problems getting through the local scene and you should always look at the local scene as your brothers and your and for the female spotters your sisters and and people to help you on your journey where you're at right now, you know, because a lot of people want to, you know, be showmans nowadays, and but you gotta, you're gonna need some of these people along the line, and you won't realize it until you get there. And if you burn those bridges, you know, it's never gonna be a good thing. So, um, I'm just excited, man. I I try to keep keep a, keep a good uh, keep a good head, and um, you know, be cordial with everyone. You know, because you never know what opportunities to be out there. You never know who will have your name in their mouth no matter where you're at. You know, just always try to be that person. I, I completely agree. One of the memes I seen the other day was, you know, it showed about 150 people in the crowd, and it said, if you haven't fought here, and then it showed like a, a packed house that, you know, 13,000, 14,000 people, uh, you don't deserve yeah. to be here. And, and, and if I'm gathering what you're saying, that's just exactly what you're saying, Correct. Yeah, man, I fought, man, when I first started fighting, I fought on smaller shows. I fought on so many shows. Um, Ken Porter was, like, my first, I took a fight on two weeks' notice all the time. Like, I was just trying to fight. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I didn't think it's been used. But, you know, those people remember you. And as I got into, like, bigger shows, people were like, Charles, I've been watching you since, like, your second fight, man. You, you come such a long way, man, and you're such a good dude. And, and he's, those people remember you, and those are the best fans. They fans that grow with you as a fighter, and you just always have to appreciate that. You always have to put your best foot forward, you know, because those people are always watching you, man, and they're always rooting for you. And you know, when you start making it nationally, those people will still feel like like they're a part of your journey, you know. And those are the most important people. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. I think I watched you um, from your, from the fight. Prior to Demetrius Wilson, but then I was there cage side with your your first fight with Demetrius Wilson. To me, that was one of the best amateur fights I've ever seen, ever. And yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, you guys just threw down. But uh, with that said, you know um, you had a a pretty illustrious um, Amy career. Uh, you're you're, you're you, you've you've been pro for about a year, year and a half now. 
Um, there's been a lot of people there along the way. Is there anybody that you would like to thank? Um, I mean, first and foremost, I want to thank Mike Rogers, man. He's just an amazing, amazing guy. I definitely want to thank him. He opens his doors. He he doesn't ask for anything, man. And he just all Mike wants you to do is come and work hard and make some of yourself and be a good person, you know. And um, along the way, if you can give back, give back, you know. But he, Mike just has a big heart, you know. And secondly, I just want to thank my family and um, for having my back no matter what. My my dad, my mom. Um, Wanda McNeil, Reggie McNeil, they they made me who I am, you know, and uh, and I just if I'm missing anyone, I, I I apologize, but you know, I the first people to come to my mind is my family, um, my my mentor, my older cousin, you know, like just everyone who's ever um, if I've asked a question and they've been there to help me, it's everyone who's been there. It's just uh, I appreciate everything. I'm, I try to be a sponge at all times, and so um, yeah. But yeah, most definitely Mike Rogers and my family first and foremost, and uh, the fans for sure. You know, you couldn't do go too far without the fans. You know, holding you up and hey, we want to see this guy. So that's a big thing too. <laughs> no, no doubt about it. Charles. Thank you for taking the time. I know you're on your lunch break and uh, you're a couple of days. Uh, from your fight. Thank you. You're listening to Funky Monkey MMA. You can listen to Funky Monkey MMA Radio on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Blog Talk Radio, Player FM, Cast Roller, the TuneIn Radio app, MMAFutures.com, LoveMMA.com, MMARecords.com, and FightBookMMA.com. For the freshest news and notes on all things MMA, get over to FunkyMonkeyMMA.com. You're listening to Funky Monkey MMA.